with you guys. Now, organization is a very important thing. Don't get me wrong. But don't listen to these TikTok gurus or YouTube real estate gurus try to sell you a CRM for $100 a month, $200 a month. I've seen some crazy ones for about $500 a month. If you're just starting out, you do not need this stuff. Google Sheets or Excel will do just fine until you start gaining momentum. And when you actually start having money coming in, then that's where you start thinking about getting a CRM. But for now, we're going to get organized on Google Sheets because we want you guys to utilize your money in the things that directly get you deals. We'll worry about CRMs later when you guys actually get deals. So we're going to open up a Google Sheets and it's real simple. This is how I, this is how I stayed organized back in the day. I would pretty much put the date right here. So we're going to go date 17, 2023. We're going to put address because we got to know the address of the property. I would say status. This is where I guess you would put follow up. If you need to follow up with the seller, if it's a hot lead, whatever you want to put in here. I also forgot to include in the video, do not upload 100 properties in this Google Sheet. This Google Sheet is a CRM, technically, and it's just for leads and it's for prospect deals. It's not leads you haven't made contact with yet because if you do do that, you're going to get overwhelmed with deals and it's going to just be too much on your list. Only put leads in here. All right, we're back to the video. Let you know what the lead was, like what the lead status is. It could be cold, follow, follow up two weeks. So now you know. So now after you made six different contacts, you can log them and you can kind of go back at the end of the day and see, okay, I got to follow up with this person two weeks. This one, this one is a hot lead. Let me keep on going with this tomorrow, whatever. But that's what status means. That's what status is. So we'll put status. We'll also put, we can put notes at the end. We'll, I mean, we can put notes right here. We, we'll, we'll, we'll arrange it, but I'm going to just put all the stuff that we need to stay organized. So notes, this is everything about the call, everything about the deal. This is where you put the condition of the property. If I usually right click because you can't really fit too much in this box. So I'll insert note and I'll be like a uh, property condition. And you can put the condition of the property of which you guys talked about motivation, what the motivation is, if the seller has a dog, seller has dog, I mean, whatever is good to put down for the deal. I help you stay on track and help you remember what's going on with the deal because you're gonna be doing, you're gonna be doing making a lot of phone calls. Sometimes I do put seller has a dog. So now I can go back in my notes and be like, okay, I talked to this guy three weeks ago, but I do not remember. And I start looking at my bullet points. I'm like, oh, seller has a dog. Oh, that seller. I'll sometimes put stuff like that just, just so I can keep mental tabs to spark my memory. That's what the note tab is for. We'll keep that right there. What else we need, right? We have the address, but we don't know who we're talking to. So we need seller name. Or if you're, if you're doing direct to agent, agent name. This is the contact's name. So right now, we're doing direct to seller. So we're going to put seller name. And let's just say it's John. Let's say his name's John. We have his name. We have to figure out how we can contact him again after we have. Let's say this one was a two-week follow-up. Two-week follow-up. We'll do F-U for follow-up. Two-week follow-up. Now, I make so many phone calls on my phone, I don't really remember people's numbers. So that's why we're going to make another tab called seller phone number because we have to remember how to contact them. So one, two, three, just whatever, whatever his phone number is. That's gonna be his phone number. Oh, what else do we need? So we have the address with the status of the deal, notes, seller name, seller phone number. And I would, I would also put a calendar tab because you're gonna wanna put stuff in your calendar. I would say a calendar tab and then this is when you log, okay, when we're going to call him. Since our status is two-week follow-up, I'm going to put the next time I call this guy, I would say two weeks is about, I would say December, let's just go 12, December 3rd, 23, right? I know I got to call him on December 3rd. Keep in mind now, we are going to be calling a lot of people. Let's go, let's say December 3rd comes around and I see this. I got to remember why I have to follow up with them. So maybe after, right after I called him and I identified 
we're going to follow up with them in two weeks. I'll probably just go right here after I put the date, go to notes, and I'll be like, um, seller told me follow back up with him for an offer. Now I know when December 3rd comes around, I can go back and be like, okay, December 3rd, now I know what to call him about. Really, this is all you need. And okay, so let's say we are, we're, we're making our calls, we're making our leads. Let's say we got, we got Mary right here. We have Bill right here. These are old names. <laughs> and we, we logged our calendars. Um, we logged our statuses. Now the next day it comes around. I just go like this, select this row, select this row now. And now I'm ready for the next day. I pick this day and now I'm ready to hit the next day. Same stuff. Let me see what else I had on my Google Sheets back in the day. I forgot. The most, I forgot the most important part. So we have we have all of our we have a, we have a good set right now. I would probably move. Let's move this. Let's move this over here because we want to know what they're asking, right? Asking price, and we also want to know. I would call this magic, magic number, or MAO. Call it. Let's call it MAO. That's just, that's what we that's the term we taught. And like let's say you know, we got our leads. We we got the phone with them. They're asking 130,000, but our MAO is 80K. This is what we identified. Now we know what to offer when we have 50 leads on our thing or 100 leads, whatever. We don't have to kind of always go back to our notes. We just know from our, before we even started the day, we comp these numbers and we're like, okay, I know what to offer the seller now. And this is going to help you keep tabs a lot easier. We need these two things. We need the asking price with the seller's asking because a lot of the times you're going to use that number up against them not against them but you got to keep that in tab you got to keep that in mind because if you're calling a seller and you call them back a week later and you forgot what they're asking they're going to think you're probably hollywood and you're not really taking the time to consider what they're what they're talking about or what they're what where they want to be at so that's why when you get their asking number we're going to, we made a specific tab right here for asking and we want to, and also we need our number too so we have their number and we have our number this is all the stuff we pretty much need let me see what else we need but actually one more thing we, we do need one more thing you guys can put you can you guys can decide to put this if you want i think this is really helpful what we're going to want to need to we're going to move this seller we're going to move the information down one more we're going to want the arv of the properties because i forgot we're going to be having a lot of leads come in we're going to forget the ARVs and we're going to comp it and we're not going to be able to remember all these numbers in our head. So let's say the ARV is 190, 190K. This is going to be good because we know our, we know our MAO is 80. We can tell the seller, we could, we could use this for negotiation. We can tell the seller, look, it's going to sell for 190K because this is what we comped before and now we're logging it. We can say, look, it's going to sell for 190. It needs 60K worth of work and I have to account for commissions and all this stuff. This is where I need to be. Now also, let's say we get it at this number. Now you're ready to market it to a buyer right away because you logged the ARV already. You don't have to go and waste time and recomp. Time is very valuable and we don't want to keep on going back and recomping and refining all this information. So ARV is a really important one to have in here. That's everything now. That is everything that we need to stay organized. Obviously, I don't really use Google Sheets anymore. Because I have a lot of lead flow coming in from different pipe, different funnels, direct to seller, direct to agent, PPC, all these different things, direct mail, whatever. It's hard for me to stay really organized on a Google Sheet. So that's why we use advanced CRMs. You guys don't need this yet. We're going to get, well, we plan to make a more advanced course to talk about after you guys get your first couple of deals, how to transfer this Google Sheets onto an actual CRM and how to start developing a good system to or have more leads come in. But for now, you guys only need this. Don't get swindled into buying a CRM just yet. Google Sheets is free and it's perfectly fine. I, I was on Google Sheets for about nine months before I bought my first CRM. So that should tell you something. This is how you stay organized, guys. Uh, hopefully this video wasn't too long and hopefully you guys figured out how to use Google Sheets. It's pretty simple. If you guys do have any questions about it, just drop it in the comments. Drop your phone number or email and we will We'll reach out to you and kind of tell you how to do this. It's a great way to stay organized, guys. And we wish you the best on your organization. And we'll see you in the next lesson.